Well, first of all, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Appreciate that. Well, it's great to have the opportunity. Now, uh, you'll be kicking off the next 100th year of uh, ICMA. What a, what, a, what a privilege that is, right? Oh, absolutely. I, I, don't, I don't care what particular year it is in ICMA history. To be able to have the honor to be able to say that you were the president and work with, uh, you know, at this point, 94, 9,500 highly talented, dedicated, excellent people working in local government. It's just amazing. And, and the as we've been saying all week, the, the importance of the work that ICMA and ICMA members do is, is never been greater, has it really? I mean, communities really need uh, excellent city managers. I, I think they do, and it's beyond um, what we originally started out as, which is trying to be somebody that became really good at producing a product, whether it was you know figuring out a way to build infrastructure or do those kinds of items, to the real discussion that, you know, quite frankly, Simon um, push off, which is how do we use leadership skills to help communities make really good decisions? Right. And so you're still going to have to have those hard technical skills, but you're really going to have to have a lot more of the soft skills in order to help people um, participate in a time when you have so much division about what the right answer is. Now let's talk a little bit about your agenda for the, for the coming year. What are some of the things that, that, that you really want to get done? Um, I think a couple of things. Uh, first thing, I want people to have a good time and recognize that uh, um, this is a great profession. You know, I really enjoy it. Uh, and I think one of the most important things for me is that I think people fail to realize because we're so squeezed with uh, resources and trying to be able to figure out a way to get the, get the job done that sometimes we lose sight of what we're really talking about. Um, if we went to uh, virtually anybody around and asked them to tell us what they were proud of, you know, you're going to hit the family and you're going to hit um, maybe where you went to school and you'll start having them do, you know, fight songs from their colleges or whatever. But inevitably in that top three or four items is going to be their hometowns. Right. You know, the community or the neighborhood you grew up in. That's still a pretty special place and it always will be. You know, my hometown of Lisbon, Maine, um, it's not the greatest place in the world but it's always going to be my hometown, right. no matter where I go. And I always want it to be something that I'm going to be proud of. And I want my elected leadership and I want my appointed leadership to continue to do everything to make me feel proud of where I'm from or where I'm living. And that is something that's totally unique to doing a professional job than doing it in the private sector. Because people are giving us and trusting us with something that's pretty sacred. Right. And I know one of the other things that you want to look at is the whole strategic direction of the ICMA. Well, we've, um, we've been excellently served, um, particularly under Bob O'Neill's leadership as the executive director, um, but also through a very good strategic plan that was finally adopted after two years or three years of engagement in 2008. Um, I was very fortunate my first term on the board side in 2008, so I got to work on which ones do we first and then what do we do second and how do we do that. Fast forward here to 2014, we've almost done everything that's in that strategic plan. We also have a bunch of other things that have come on board with some great work from some of our members like the Leadership Task Force, the Women in the Profession Task Force, uh, the Task Force on Finance. And that's really basically saying, what are we doing next and how do we put these pieces together? So in order to be able to make sure that we do it and do it well and learn from our experiences in the past, um, the board will be asked in November to outline and create the next strategic planning process and we'll go look for the greatest and the best, um, balance it all, all the members and some of the young and up and coming members to put together a couple of years worth of work and to work very closely with the board to write the next strategic plan that hopefully will serve us for the next decade. And I know one of the other things that you're uh, keen on and something we've been talking about all week is the importance of diversity. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, I've gone through a couple things in my lifetime to make me realize that there are some people that don't look at the world the same way that I look at it. Um, and what I mean by that is a, a guy from Maine, you know, quite frankly, one of the whitest states in the, in the union and the old white guy. Um, I grew up with very little diversity around me. Um, it, that was both a blessing or a curse. From a blessing standpoint, I, I didn't have people trying to convince me that, you know, somebody that did look the same way as me or act the same with me was bad. And so I never was exposed to that. But it was a curse because I also was never exposed to the fact that there are people that legitimately feel that um, because there's a characteristic that's different, that you don't judge them by their own personal individual character. And so that's important. Um, and you know, as I've gone through 
particularly with the work as I did on the Women in the Profession Task Force. I was one of, you know, about a handful of guys with about 60 talented ladies that were on that task force. And I found out there are things that I do that, from a really stupid, naive perspective, that's taken the wrong way by um, females that not, do not know me. Right. And so I think there's a lot of that happens in, by particularly older white guys around racial issues, around uh, gender issues, around a bunch of those. So we've uh, created a task force to be able to have a very intense conversation around how do we move that conversation along and how do we make a difference so that um, city halls and, and county offices across the country and the world do not look like a bunch of old white guys um, and when our communities are so dramatically changing. Because finally, I know something else that, that, that's very important to you is, is whilst it's a great opportunity to be uh, you know, a, a city manager, it's also a challenge and a responsibility, isn't it, to, uh, face, the, to face the communities in, in a way that's relevant to them today? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that one of the things that's interesting is that um, because we're no longer doing uh, in a time when we have so much money and we, do, we have all kinds of products, we're now wor working to reprioritize, and particularly as at least in, in the United States, the federal and the state governments basically boot all the tough issues and then take our money and say, go fix it. You know, the things that are most important to people are, are you know, public safety and education and, and uh, the environment and, and, you know, jobs, all that stuff, that all requires scope, something that an individual community can't do, and yet, you know, the feds and the state are just totally saying, we're not doing anything about it. And so what we are now having to figure out at the local level is, how do we work on all the traditional things? You know, the public safety and, you know, the infrastructure and schools and all that. But at the bigger issue, how do we work on all that other stuff? Because if right. we don't, um, you know, we're not going to leave the, the world better than the way we inherited it. Well, thanks ever so much indeed for taking the time to talk no to us. We really appreciate it and, and every best wish for your year as president. Thank well, you. thanks.